humans are not born free. Everybody is born with a fear of the strange and the unfamiliar. And fear is what dominates all humans like all animals. And how does one get rid of fear? And my answer is curiosity. When one becomes so interested in something, one forgets the dangers which are obvious to everyone else. And therefore, when we talk about liberty, equality and fraternity, we have to see that that is only the beginning. Liberty is wonderful, but the right to say what you want is um, not much use if nobody listens. And people are not going to listen to what they feel is dangerous or unfamiliar or they cannot understand. And what people want, more than the right to say what they want, is to be appreciated, to be understood. And likewise equality is a wonderful thing, but we are all unequal, some are taller, some are shorter, some cannot see properly, cannot hear properly, uh, some are not so beautiful. And how can we overcome that inequality? It is by affection. With affection one forgives all the weaknesses of a person. And what is fraternity? Fraternity is very good to have a pension for when you're old and so on. But what people want is to feel alive. And the question I ask people is, how alive are you? Are you 20% alive, 50% alive? And to be alive means to know the world, to see everybody, to understand everybody. And therefore we have only just begun our uh, adventure into what humans can do. And humans are heretics. We are becoming heretics, but it means that Heresy used to mean that it was an opinion. The word heresy means opinion. Everybody has an opinion. And now increasingly, as we become educated and become more critical, we each of us have a different opinion, a slightly different opinion about this and that. We are all therefore heretics. And how to be interested in the different varieties of heresy that exist in the world. And that is curiosity. And that is why I want to speak to you and to speak to you and to speak to you and to hear what you have to say. And I accept that we will all disagree. There is no consensus. And nations and religions have been built on the basis that we must establish consensus. And the theologians of about the fourth century changed the meaning of heresy because they wanted everybody to agree with them and to have only one opinion. Before that, religion had many different opinions. People believed many things in, in Christianity. People believed in one God, ten gods, fifty gods, 356 gods. And each person developed their own kind of understanding of what Jesus said. And then the bishops said, no, we are in control. We want to have everybody have the same opinion. And this has been the long struggle of power throughout history. And what I am proposing is that we do to the uh, human world what we have done to the natural world. We have seen in the natural world, which is a great revolution in our understanding of the natural world, that this chair is not a chair, it is composed of atoms and molecules and there's minute differences inside them and there is constant interaction between them. And it's the same with humans, they're so complex. Not only is each person different, but inside each person there are enormous complexities. And you in front of me are not my contemporaries. We do not live in the same time, because in each one of our heads we have ideas which come from different centuries and different civilizations. And uh, we are like an antique shop with many different antiquities coming from different superstitions and habits. 
and prejudices which come from many different times. So we don't live in the same era. And when Einstein said that the division between past, present and future is an illusion, he said it for physical, scientific reasons, but it is true of human conduct. We live in different times and that is why we have these terrible arguments. And the challenge is to say how can we make disagreement into a fertile, useful thing? And my answer is it is discovery. If we are curious, what we become interested in is discovery, discovery of the world. And to be alive, therefore, is to be constantly discovering what life means in all its variety. And uh, I, uh, I, I, when I ask myself, what is the purpose of life? One can say it is to produce more life, to have children. But um, beyond that, we have to know, we cannot just say to children, be happy. I don't say be happy is not, be happy is a, is a, a sign of, a sign of, of uh, abandonment of any idea. That is to say, how can you be happy if there is so much disgusting things in the world, so much injustice, so much cruelty, so many bombs being thrown on innocent people? How can you be happy if you think only about yourself? Happy, happy is being contented, contented with yourself. And governments want you to be happy so that you don't start a revolution. We must get beyond happiness. We must go beyond obedience. We must go beyond imitation. We must go towards discovery, which is understanding other people. And that is why I put conversation between people as the as the uh, method by which we, we can begin to see how our differences can be useful.